Hello and uh, welcome dear students and other folks who stumbled across this video on YouTube. My name is Leonard Dobusch. I'm a professor of organization at University of Innsbruck in Austria. And uh, this is a brief introduction to writing research essays. I will uh, specifically demarcate research essays from standard seminar papers and then give some suggestions for writing styles. So let's get started with, uh, of course, the most important question, what is an essay or uh, rather what should an essay be? And uh, as I mentioned already, I will particularly focus on research essays. And a research essay is um, an open form of an argumentative short text. Um, and so uh, drawing on an essay about essay writing, <laughs> I want to emphasize the two points uh, that uh, Paul Graham, uh, who wrote this essay, it's uh, available free online, so you might want to check it out. Check it out. Um, when he writes that um, expressing ideas helps to form them, uh, he actually refers to a, a quite general rule uh, that was also, in, in other words, formulated by Karl Weick, a famous organization scholar, uh, who uh, posited that people know what they think when they see what they say. And so, to some degree, uh, a research essay is a unique opportunity for you to really get to know what actually is your own opinion on, on a difficult, complicated subject matter. And uh, so if you write an essay, uh, you really should try to, to actually arrive at a conclusion first and foremost for yourself. And the second point uh, in this quote um, is uh, actually one um, that's already related to the style of essay writing. Um, when Paul Graham uh, continues with, uh, in a real essay, you're writing for yourself, you're thinking out loud. Uh, and so this implies that you write as if you want to make a point, your point. And, you, and thinking out loud already points to the fact that, that the way you're doing that is to some degree uh, you're making the point uh, if you want to, uh, in a way that you want to explain it or convince a friend or a listener. So it's like about maybe you in the first draft you just want to really write down uh, what you're saying, quite literally. And since it's a research essay, of course, your uh, way of argumentation has uh, to be sound in terms of basic uh, scientific standards. So you can't make stuff up. Uh, you have to ground your arguments in uh, scientific sources or in, in a rational way of argumentation. But um, this doesn't change the basic fact that First of all, you're writing for yourself, and at the same time, you're thinking out loud. And uh, these two things together, uh, that you want to clarify something for yourself, and that you make, want to make a point, and you want to maybe even find out what uh, you think about a subject matter, this brings me to the most important uh, point of essay writing from a student's perspective, or uh, what I would uh, really want you to keep in mind when thinking about designing, crafting, and writing uh, your essay, it's that an essay is not a seminar paper or not a term paper. Uh, so let's uh, try to uh, to get these two things in order and to, to really differentiate between the two. So, for example, as I said already, in an essay, you pick and defend a position. You, you, have, you take a stance. In a seminar paper, on the other hand, it's more about uh, striving for objectivity, you know, uh, summarizing the literature, uh, discussing pros and cons, and, and it's not about uh, clear positioning. Then, in terms of formal, uh, formal requirements, in an essay, there's no index. Usually, there are not even subheadings. So, the idea is, an essay is a short text form, and... Uh, having too many uh, subheadings would even distract the reader, and a good essay is written in a way that it guides the reader uh, through the text without the need for an index or uh, some some subheadings or or, or or sort sort of. In a seminar paper, 
and even more in a master thesis or in a, in a PhD, of course, you need an index, you need the subheadings. Actually, they're very important in this text form. Very much, very often it's the case that uh, you can judge a, a seminar paper already uh, to some degree by looking at the index, whether there's a red thread in the index and whether um, the, the different subsections are mutually exclusive and collectively exhaustive and that kind of stuff. Uh, but that's not the issue in a research essay. Uh, given the restraints in terms of length, uh, then, of course, you only use few and short quotations. So, yes, of course, uh, you base your arguments in maybe some, uh, some literature you've read, some papers, uh, some books, but you really try to get the gist out of it, and so you only use sparsely and only short quotations uh, to emphasize or underline the point that you want to make. And actually, it's in the way, in the end, it's, it's the point that you're going to make. And, uh, and so, yes, some uh, authoritative quotes might help you, um, but they are not center stage. In a seminar paper, also because of it's, there's more space uh, in such a text form, longer direct quotations are possible. And then um, another point uh, related to this is that usually in an essay, you don't need tables, you don't need figures. So sometimes, of course, all the things I'm telling here is rules, and you know there are always exceptions to prove the rule, or exceptions that, in a way, yeah, they understand that, that you are willing to make because you understand the rule. But overall, an essay should work without uh, tables or figures. Um, because it's short enough and you want to make just one point, not several points, and uh, so the reader should be able to remind, uh, to remember what you wanted to make uh, after having read through the four to five pages. Uh, in a seminar paper, that situation is different. Actually, here, tables are mostly appreciated. Usually, you try to really condense larger bodies of literature, and then uh, tables are a, a very handy tool uh, to accomplish this condensation of quite of diverse uh, streams of uh, thought and argumentation and literature. And the same holds uh, for, for figures. And this, uh, what I mentioned already, the essay is shorter than the seminar paper, so the, short, the, the research essay is usually between three and eight pages. Actually, um, I usually don't want to have research essays that are longer than five pages. And uh, that's not because it's easy, actually, to really make a good point in four to five pages. Uh, it's it's sometimes harder than you know summarizing a bunch of literature on on, des on ten pages and then you know have just one or two paragraphs in the end uh, and uh, to in a way giving an outlook or something like that. But in a seminar paper you have more space, so fifteen to twenty pages. That's the usual length of a seminar paper. So when you look at this, you can you really see, and I really want you to remember that if you uh, think about your essay, um, really don't try to write a seminar paper. Uh, of just five pages, because this is something that won't work. So it's really about, um, yeah, choosing um, a different format uh, for your text, and this has different uh, rules and different uh, affordances, and of course different challenges, but also different opportunities. So how uh, do you then, if there is no index and there are no subheadings, how do you then structure the essay? And the classical uh, tripartite essay structure. Um, has an introduction that or poses a clear question or a starting point for argumentation, followed by the main section, which presents the core arguments and uh, which is structured by paragraphs. Actually, the whole essay is mostly structured by paragraphs, and paragraphing is the most important craft, I would say, within uh, an essay. And then uh, a brief, uh, short conclusion part in the end uh, that actually, on the one hand, needs to follow from the core arguments in the main section, but also uh, refers back to the, the question or the, the thesis, uh, the starting point in the introduction. So let's have a, a, another look at these three main parts of the essay. So in the introduction, it's all about the topic and the relevance. So what, uh, why is this relevant? Why are you writing this essay? And why are you picking particular this particular question or topic? Because, you know, you could, of all the topics in the world you chose to spend your time to really uh, write about this one issue and to make this point. And so why is it relevant? Why is it worth your time? And um, why is it also worth the reader's time? And this is mostly related to a problem. 
Yeah, so there's so there's maybe the overarching topic is is uh, relevant. Yeah? So such as for example, yeah, a pandemic. Uh, but this doesn't explain already why your take on it, your uh, essay, is, is worth your and your readers' time. So um, what's the problem or what's the thesis uh, that you think? Uh, should be out there and should be read. So, and usually that's some kind of complication. Some, for example, uh, conventional wisdom that you want to put into question, or that's a, uh, bringing together different uh, uh, strands of, of knowledge and deriving some synergistic uh, synthesis out of it. And then um, the third point, and this is maybe the point that uh, of the introduction that is most prone to misunderstandings is a solution what is the methodology is applied and i don't want you to spend to, uh, and usually you're not expected to uh, to really write about what you're going to do next actually i would really recommend not doing that uh, but it's about um, giving an idea uh, what will come next uh, in terms of how are you going to approach the problem? How are you going to address it? You After the introduction, you will probably have um, three and a half to four pages left. Uh, or, or f f f And so what uh, will they be all about? Uh, how, so what's your your take on the, on the problem? And then um, this already uh, brings you to the main section of... Uh, the essay, the main section that offers arguments and proofs. And uh, the most important point here is, uh, most important thing to remember is one argument, one clearly recognizable paragraph. With clearly recognizable paragraph, I mean that there should be some space between paragraphs. So if you have one and a half pages without a, a visually recognizable paragraph, you're not doing it right, usually. Um, and then, so... You make one paragraph and you present one argument in one paragraph, but at the same time, the paragraphs should not just follow unconnected uh, after one after another, but rather the paragraph should be, should be linked by a red argumentative thread. And I think uh, this kind of, you know, countervailing uh, demands the, to, 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 to balance these countervailing demands is one of the key challenges of essay writing, that on the one hand, a paragraph should make an argument on its own, but at the same time, one paragraph should lead to another, and one argument should follow or should relate to the previous argument in your main section. So how can you achieve that? There are different structures possible. I'm not saying that anything goes, um, but of course there's not one best way. So one thing could be um, you pose a thesis, a thesis that's m probably controversial, or even um, provocative, and then uh, the thesis is followed by debunking the alternative views, which are usually, if it's provocative or if it's unconventional, then you're debunking conventional wisdom uh, before you end up in your final conclusion. Uh, another issue could be to juxtapose two contradictory theses and then maybe um, make a clear decision uh, on behalf of one of the two theses, or you present a synthesis of various stances. So you have two or three which are seemingly contradictory, but then you show, no, they are not, if you maybe uh, add a third or a fourth perspective to it, or if you take a different perspective, then the two or three have in common. And this, of course, are three possible structures. There are others. There may be combinations. Um, but this already, this should give you an idea how, what actually in the introduction was meant with methodology and what what here uh, in a way is related to the red argumentative thread that connects the paragraph of paragraphs of your essay uh, then since I said that the most important point is paragraphing and the paragraph structure actually there are two main um, ways to structure a, par a paragraph one would be the pyramid structure so you present data examples quotes and then in the end this builds up your argument more common, actually, is the inverted pyramid structure. At least, um, that's what I was told, that uh, the inverted pyramid with a topic sentence in the beginning that makes the argument and then is, in a way, followed by data examples and quotes to back it up, to back up the argument, that this is something that, uh, yeah, in English language uh, countries, uh, students are taught regularly. Uh, so since I'm a German native, 
I had not had uh, so, uh, many classes in essay writing, actually something that I really think uh, I regret and I really envy the um, Anglo-Saxon students that they have much more experience and also much better trained in essay writing. So, um, and after the main section, which where you presented your main arguments, uh, you already uh, arrived at the conclusions, and there it's important to refer back to the initial question or problem. This doesn't mean to entirely repeat it. You know, an essay is quite brief, so you can expect your readers to uh, remember what the main problem or the, uh, the main question was all about. But nevertheless, uh, you need to, in a way, relate the arguments that you presented in the main section, relate those arguments to the initial question or problem, and then make very clear what's the unique contribution of your essay. And usually it shouldn't be, it could be that way, it could be another way, who knows, but rather you really, uh, so, so questions, uh, Paul Graham in his essay on essay writing, he says, questions is not enough. In an essay, you want to come up with at least some answers. And then you might give an outlook and further implications. So this whole conclusion part need not be too long, can be two, one or two paragraphs. Um, so very, very really make your point in a very explicit way. Okay, so this was the, the overarching structure of the essay. Now let's talk about form and formal uh, uh, formalities of, of essays. And the good news is there are less formal requirements for an essay when compared to a seminar paper, as you know already. So, of course, necessary parts of the essay, of a research essay, are a title page, including your author information and, and all the... Um, uh, the information that's necessary for your instructors in your university class uh, to recognize you, um, then, um, of course, you follow standard um, referencing guidelines. So, of course, you quote reference literature in the main text usually, so no footnotes, and then you present a reference list. So that's, it's still a research essay, uh, so you just follow the usual referencing style guidelines. You know, there's not one right or wrong style guide for references. It's just that ideally you um, you follow one uh, style guide of referencing and then you stick to it throughout the essay. But that's the same for, for a seminar paper as well. Um, so, um, but what is not part of an essay, and I said this already, no tables of contents, no no indexes, no tables, no figures, usually no footnotes, and actually that's, I would say, is a common mistake. Please don't describe on the meta level the structure of the essay or what you're going to do in the next paragraph, because usually, actually, it's just four to five pages, so it's not just not enough space to waste it on meta level descriptions. It, it's It's brief enough. Uh, that you can expect the reader to to follow your course of argument, uh, which actually brings me to to stylistic arguments. Um, so let me start with some general recommendations, and I'm particularly directing these general recommendations to uh, non-native English speakers, and particularly to those uh, that are German natives in uh, either of the independent of whether they are living in Austria or in Germany, because they usually have the hardest time to follow these general recommendations. If you follow the general recommendations, uh, actually you're more than halfway through. So first of all, really try to um, invest in a simple language with short sentences. So, so it, it, that's really something German uh, natives, they tend to, you know, if a sentence has not at least four clauses, it's not a true sentence. And you know that German words are longer than English ones. So it's really, um, uh, that's really sometimes hard to read. So in English, that's, uh, in, in German, this might still be considered to be uh, intellectual, but that's not the case in, in English. Uh, so uh, avoid flowery phrases and cliches. So uh, to give an example for a cliche, uh, only time will tell or at the speed of light or think outside a box. So just leave those, uh, you know, cliches out and, and too, all too flowery phrases. Um, uh, so flower, flowery language is also guilty of overusing adverbs and adjectives. So really just try to use stronger verbs, and I'm getting to words in a second, verbs uh, and, and maybe in stronger nouns, uh, but don't try to compensate for weak verbs with overusing adverbs or adjectives. Avoid acronyms. So of course there are some acronyms uh, that are that are universally understood. So US, you might use US or in the country where you live in, 
usually the political parties are well known, but that might not even be the case um, in our fluid political times anymore. So, but usually, um, uh, but in, aside from from these very well known standard acronyms, try to avoid acronyms at all uh, in an essay and uh, r rather sp spell it out. Um, avoid passive tense whenever possible. That's again a very common German mistake. So you you want to make a point in your essay. So it's a, okay to write about I. Uh, did or I think, and and use the first person, and uh, and just you know get rid of your passive tense, and then overall use verbs, not nouns, um, in in describing what's going on. Uh, it makes it more lively and, and and easier to read, and then particularly for essays, I would say it's very important since it's such a brief uh, text to avoid redundancy. So don't bore your reader by by you know repeating what you've said one or two pages before. Use quotes sparsely, provide facts and examples as proofs, and and I'm making here this point again, and uh, and uh, this is just a talk, so not an essay, so I will be redundant here. Take a stance. Yeah, it's it's not just enough to pose questions. So that's uh, the, the the general recommendations for essay writing. Um, in the very end of this uh, brief uh, introduction, I want to uh, add some details on what we expect from the essays in this uh, course on organizing in times of crisis. So here um, we expect you to focus on one aspect of organizing in times of crisis in assessing in the, uh, the case of the coronavirus or the COVID-19. Please focus on one question, thesis, insight or point. The essay should not be longer than five pages. Actually, it's perfectly fine if it's three and four, four to four pages. But you make uh, your point and you manage to get your your point across, and um, and you hand in the essay as requested by uh, the instructor of your course at your university. So thank you for your attention. I hope um, this brief introduction into essay writing um, was of some help. I would recommend that maybe. Um, if you uh, watch this uh, short lecture uh, before you start it, maybe you want to watch it once more once you've written your first draft uh, so that you can then, after listening to it a second time, uh, read your uh, read your draft critically whether you really uh, you know lift up to uh, the points that I want to uh, make here. So thank you for your attention and good luck with uh, writing your essay and I'm looking forward to receiving some of these essays myself.